All right, welcome to our third Employers in Virtual Residence uh, for fall 2022. Can't believe we're on our third. I wanna thank Daphne Matthews from the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts for joining us today. I know that she is in back-to-back -back <laughs> meetings, so, so thrilled that she could join us for our lunch hour chat. Um, so let's just dive right in. Daphne, can you talk to us a little bit about the Kennedy Center, your role and um, opportunities that are available for our students? Yes. Um, so hello, everyone. And thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here just to talk to you about some different opportunities we have at the Kennedy Center. Um, so yeah, my name is Daphne Matthews, and I am the Talent Acquisition and Internship Coordinator here at the um, Kennedy Center. Um, and basically what that means is that I help out with our talent acquisition team and some of our hiring practices, some of our new hire um, orientation and materials, um, and also with some of our de uh, DEIB activities um, for our employees. And then I also coordinate our internship program and our fellowship program with American University. Um, so within that role, that's where I'm like helping out with the top to bottom, really. So from the application process to the interviewing, to the run of the program, to the celebration at the end. Um, and uh, also for our fellowship with American University, that's something that we um, kind of recently created with them officially. Um, and it's just they have a arts and um, management uh, program that we partner with and we have um, four fellows right now who just started at the the day after labor day so on the sixth and they do a nine month fellowship with us um, through that program um, in terms of open opportunities uh, we recently opened our spring 2023 um, internship application which is wild to think about how we are entering 2023 um, but we're looking for about 24 interns and um, they're going to be placed throughout all our different departments and we have a lot of exciting new um, things that we're introducing to our internship program in terms of different networking opportunities you have with our um, senior level staff members including with our president deborah rudder um, and then we also are going to be doing an official partnership with our special events team so this is going to be something where um, when we have honors or mark twain or any of our nso or um, wno galas um, interns will have the opportunity to actively participate with those, um, even if they aren't placed directly within our special events team. Um, so this means like getting exposure to these different events, uh, working the red carpets, you know, getting to meet all the different um, art guest artists and um, musicians who come, and also getting to participate in the actual events. Um, so that's something exciting that we're um, happy to be able to introduce to our interns. Um, along with just some other programming things like having intern study halls, having different professional development workshops for you guys. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the overview of what's going on with our internship program. Um, in terms of um, early talent careers, um, we are actively hiring for a number of open positions um, with all our different departments. And to help with that, we recently announced how we're going to be having a fall um, arts um, career arts Arts Career in the Career in the Arts Expo, sorry, still getting used to saying it. <laughs> and it's gonna be essentially a job fair that we're gonna be hosting at the Kennedy Center. Um, and it's gonna be more specifically in our REACH building. Um, and we are super excited for this event. This is the first time the Kennedy Center has ever had a um, career expo on its campus. And um, this event will be taking place on October 24th um, from four to 6 p.m. is what we are, um, our, uh tentative certain end times um we may go a little bit longer because we have some surprises that'll be happening towards the end um and if you were to go to our career site on our official main web page you'll be able to see um we have a dedicated page just for this upcoming um, arts expo um just to provide more information and then also a pre-registration link um if you pre-register um as one of our first 50 people to pre-register um, you'll get the opportunity to interview with our different hiring managers um, to learn more specifically about our different departments and also just to get some Kane Center swag um, and just different memorabilia um, items like that. Um, and I think that's that's really the just what's going on right now in terms of career um, opportunities. That's amazing. I was um, the internship program, you know, I'll ask some questions there in the career expo. That is, that's amazing. So just, uh, just a cap, it's October 
fourth, four to six, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, and go to the website for pre-registering um, mm -hmm. for uh, like well, like a one-on-one -on -one with a with a recruiter kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. and then you can also pre-register just as an attendee if you didn't want to necessarily um, do a little interview meet and greet with our hiring managers. Um, and I also did want to add that we are inviting all local organizations and theaters to this as well. Um, so they are pre-registering along with um, different attendees and people who are interested in um, meet and greets. So it's going to be, we want it to be a community event, really, it's where like you'll be able to see all the different arts careers that are um, potentially in your future. Thank you, Daphne. That was not on my radar. So you are like super gold star for telling me that yeah. that exists so I can add it to my yeah. newsletter and tell people. Um, okay, so going back to the, to the spring application. So it is open. Um, closed dates, anything for students to know? Um, yes. Um, so it'll be closing on November 11th, um, which is a Friday. Double check that. Yeah, it should be a Friday. Um, and then following that, we're just going to have two different weeks um, determined for interviewing, which will be the week of November 14th, and then the week after Thanksgiving, so the week of November 28th. <laughs> um, so then decisions will be coming out by the first um, week of December, uh, which is that 28th week, um, in terms of offers being extended for our internship program. Excellent. Okay, so you also mentioned, you know, these internships are in all departments. So mm -hmm. I, for some folks who are on here, if they're grad students, they might already have a sense of what that that looks like. That it, that a business has like lots of different departments that need mm -hmm. people <laughs> to, to support yeah. support their functions. Um, what kind of departments for our undergrads who might be watching and thinking like, well, what does that what does that look like? So what are the departments that are looking or might be looking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, for those of you who like, didn't know or don't know, um, the Kennedy Center has 13 different departments, which is a lot <laughs> for an arts organization to have. Um, and a part of that is because we also operate as a federal building um, in terms of how we are a living memorial to President John F. Kennedy. Um, so like our operations um, department um, and our facilities team, those are all federal workers and they work to keep make sure that the building is kept um, up to date and that everything is functioning well within the building. But then all the programmatic stuff is actually the nonprofit aspect of our company. So um, that's where you have like different performances and like all the things that you know and love about the center um, are coming from our programming department. Um, in terms of placements, again, we have 24 um, for this upcoming term. And this is one of the uh, most like some of the most we've been offering since the pandemic um, and also since we switched to having our internship be um, a paid model because um, previously it was not paid um, but now it is and it is um, 1610 so DC minimum wage um, in terms of the placements we have and then specifically the departments I'm just gonna list them out and then explain a little bit more um, so our programming department is looking for um, four different interns. Our public uh, relations department is looking for two interns. Um, our newly created archives team is looking for an intern. Um, within education, we're looking for, um, uh, what is it? one, two, three, four different interns. Um, our multimedia team and like marketing is looking for three different interns. We have a new um, broadcast series and live performances filming intern placement that we're looking for. Um, our government relations team is looking for an intern. We have two different placements within our development team, and that'll be an intern working specifically with um, donor relations for the National Symphony Orchestra, then also the placement with um, special events. So that would be the intern dedicated um, working to all the different um, major events happening throughout the spring terms, which would be like Mark Twain, um, but then all the other smaller, um, uh, I, wanna, I don't wanna say minor, but just all the other um, events we have going on at the Kennedy Center. Um, and then our, um, we are, as you, you probably know, we are um, an affiliate um, of the Washington National Opera. So the Washington National, National Opera through the Kennedy Center is looking for an intern, um, actually two interns. And then the National Symphony Orchestra with us is looking for two different, two different interns. 
And then our campus rentals team within our operations department is looking for an intern. And then our human resource um, team is looking for an intern. Um, so when I say like the, <laughs> um, the spread is the spread is wide <laughs> and reaches far in terms of different teams looking for interns to work on their different uh, major um, projects. And um, the ones, I'll just also say this, ones that are usually the most popular, so you can keep this in mind if you decide to apply, um, are our programming interns, um, our public relation interns, and then usually within uh, multimedia, um, social media, and like the broadcast series and live performances filming, we're expecting those ones to have um, the most applicants, just because those are the ones that deal more specifically with the different events that are occurring at the Kennedy Center. So it gets a lot of um, hands-on in terms of like project management and artist communications. Um, it's like actually working with the different groups that come to the Kennedy Center and just being there for support. And um, also for, uh, we like you guys' ideas too. So helping out with any way we can promote it better or um, be a better um, customer service partner with those artists. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. That was so helpful. Just it just to kind of see how a organization and all the different things that you have and it changes depending on the arts organization not everybody has a government relations department but you guys of course would so mm -hmm. but there's one that I wanted to to make sure I heard correctly was it campus rental did you say yeah campus rentals um so since we are partially a public building that means we do rent out different spaces so the campus rentals intern um usually they have <laughs> I'm um, just thinking back to like past interns, they usually enjoy that placement and that they kind of apply, not necessarily knowing too much of what they'll be working with, but by the end, everyone is like, well, I wasn't even sure what I'd be doing, for, <laughs> but it ended up being just a really fulfilling placement in terms of how they got to work with so many different, like all the different um, vendors who contract here, um, they get to work with and help support, make sure that everything was set up for them and different things like that. Great, thank you. Because uh, as I was going down and I thought if I had any follow-up questions, that probably was a follow-up question <laughs> that a student yeah. might have for me. So, mm -hmm. um, so just in terms of who can apply for your programs, is it it's open to, is it undergraduate all years or is there certain years and grad students, post-grad, international yeah. students, I, all of that? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, our internship program is open to undergraduate students with a sophomore standing and up. Um, so two years and up. And then um, uh, for our summer term, how that works is just if you are, when you're applying, if you just finished your freshman year, you're eligible for our summer term and onwards. Um, and then seniors up to six months post-graduation are still eligible to apply. So another way to think of that is if you're applying and you're currently a senior, but by the time the term starts, you graduated, you're still eligible for our internship program. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any graduate students in our internship program, just because we feel like at that point that they'd be, it would be more beneficial for them to apply to like our um, early career um, opportunities, unless some of our part-time and full-time openings. Um, but yeah, and then international students are encouraged to apply as well. Um, but because of the nature of our building, we can't support like a, a work visa. But um, if you're coming into it with that, it's they're definitely eligible. So it sounds like for international students, internships, but maybe not early early career. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. No, that's perfect. It's good. It's just good for folks to know like what they can and cannot apply for. Fantastic. Um, so my next question is: You as a talent acquisition officer as a recruiter you know so you're seeing a lot of resumes and cover letters and that's usually a big question of course that we get um just maybe some ideas of like what you hope to see on resumes what are things that stand out when you see it and you're like oh no 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 or yes this is excellent or even skills that you know that um people are looking for so if you can maybe speak broadly to resume cover letters skills anything that you think might be helpful for somebody who's applying yeah, um, so I know for um, the hiring process specifically for our internship program, um, we really do capitalize on people's cover letters. And then there's also a personal response aspect to it as well. Um, and that's just because we feel that, you know, from your resume, we're getting, you know, where you worked, what specifically you were doing, you know, um, what your degree is, all that overview. But then your cover letter is where we're really able to feed your personality and for you to tell the story that your resume is not. 
Um, that's the best way that we explain it. Um, and within that cover letter, we're also learning more about you. Why would this position be better for you as opposed to someone else whose resume may look similar to you or they just were working on different locations? Um, so it's really a chance for you to explain, you know, I have this in my resume and just to capitalize on these were the, I put the, you know, the job tasks under that, but this is more specifically like I helped increase um, sales by this much, or I helped um, reach this different audience that hadn't been reached before. Um, those are things that really come through the best through your cover letter. Um, and then also for the internship program specifically, we do tell our hiring managers to look at the cover letter and personal response first just because we don't want um, them to just look at someone's resume and be like, well, this person, you know, they've had two different internships before us. So we know that it'll be, um, you know, not that much of a gain for them if they were to be here. Um, Cause we want to capitalize also on internship growth and the growth of our interns. So just, you know, what individual is going to come to the center maybe with, you know, no internships before or just one or two and what are they going to be able to take away and how much are they going to be able to grow by being here as opposed to someone who again has had like, you know, four or five different internships and this is just like another name on their on their belt of internships, so to speak. Um, uh, but then with uh, early careers as well, we really are looking for people who um, are willing to learn because the Kennedy Center is a very, um, it's a very interesting place to work just because there are so many different types of people um, in terms of like you have people who are more creative minded, you have people who are more, uh, um, I don't want to say like logical, but just people who are more straight to it and like they're not thinking about um, uh, the big overview picture, but they're more like, well, how do we get this done? You have the combination of people who are, you know, I, this is my dream and this is what I want to have happen. The people who are like, well, how do we make it? How do we make it happen? <laughs> what are the steps for getting there? Um, so just having people who are flexible and knowing that they're in a um, in a constantly evolving and creative atmosphere and that, you know, we highly encourage um, psychological safety and workplace safety. And we are pushing that through with our different DEIB um, activities and different talks we've been um, spearheading with our employees in terms of like, hey, you know, we're, we're hiring more and we're trying to increase the diversity of perspectives, the diversity of age, ethnicity, gender, um, everything. And we're looking for people who are willing to step into this environment and to know like, hey, the work that I'm doing is meaningful, um, no matter if they're coming in as a um, assistant or they're coming in as a senior director. Um, so there's, yeah, the whole range of that. Any, so anything on like resumes or cover letters that you see are, are you know, this probably is pretty clear to most folks, but just, you know, anything that you've seen that are like no-nos or things mm -hmm. that you wish that people could do better, anything that you've seen that would be helpful for students who are applying? Yeah, so um, I would say within resumes, um, again, trying to keep it to, as you're, as a young professional, trying to keep it to that one page, um, because we, we understand the different jobs you have. We can read up on, you know, the different tasks you have. But then again, we want you to keep the resume short in terms of just, okay, this is where, this is where I work. These were my major tasks, this is how long it was there. But then again, that cover letter is where we're really expecting you to explain more about, well, this is what I was doing. And cover letters were, they usually run around two pages, but they shouldn't be more than two pages, I would say. Um, so keeping it to that two page mark for the cover letter, one page mark for the resume, um, I would say it is good to have like, and also for resumes, they don't have to be super, um, flashy, super creative, um, having just, you know, a, a plain black and white resume is fine too. Um, having a more creative resume would probably be best if you were applying for like one of our marketing positions or social media, multimedia, where they are doing more graphic design. So you can kind of showcase your skills in that way. Um, if you were to design up your resume, but other than that, you know, just having the different sections of, you know, your name and, uh, your email address. Um, we don't necessarily need your address on there because that would be within your application again, but just having name, contact information, you know, uh, where you went to school, and then having your work history, uh, maybe some accomplishments or different projects that are relevant to the job you're applying for. Um, and this is just another, like, I guess, kind of general uh, answer for resumes and cover letters, but um, always make sure you're tailoring them to the different jobs you're applying for. Um, 
because we can tell <laughs> if you you know are just kind of plugging in a company's name as you <laughs> change out your resume or change out your cover letter. Um, uh, the more personalized and the more we can feel your voice coming through and like the active like passion you have for this job um, that you're applying for, the more likely we're like, okay, this person took that time. We can see that they already have a drive and that they would be passionate about the work they're doing. So we're going to pass them on to, you know, the hiring manager for that position. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's, those are kind of like the major, major things I would point out. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Daphne. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I feel like I've covered the spring application. You've covered like that fantastic career expo that's happening mm -hmm. and kind of the basics of the program. Is there anything that I'm missing or any last advice that you want to give before we end the recording and we can we start the, the live component? Yeah. Um, so I would say I, I do really want to highlight again, like the upcoming career expo. Um, this is something that's going to be our entire um, organization is behind it. This is gonna be a great chance to get exposure to a lot of important people within um, the performing arts sphere. Um, and we're gonna have like empl employee panel sessions where people are just gonna be talking about what it's like being an uh, employee here at the Kennedy Center. Um, again, we're gonna have so like a lot of key representatives for each department within um, our different department booths. And you're gonna have the chance to have a face, you know, face-to-face -face interaction with these people um, for the first time, really in, in the center's history, having this type of um, event. Um, so I really want to capitalize on, you know, attending if you can, um, parking is free, you know, we're, we're making sure that there is like really no bar like barriers to um, access for this opportunity. Um, and we're expecting a great return on it as well. Um, and then in terms of the internship program, and if you're thinking about applying, um, I would just say that, you know, I've, and I've only been here for about a year next, next month. So even I'm pretty new to this role, but in the full um, full lifespan of being here and seeing the different um, entrants that have come through, no one has had a bad experience. Like it's, it, it would be pretty hard to have a bad experience as an intern here, just because we do capitalize on making sure that our interns have high quality work. And that's actually what they're, um, how the placements are approved is by what projects the interns would be working on. Because we feel like if you're doing administrative work, you could be doing administrative work anywhere. And a lot of you probably have experience already with doing that. So now it's like, okay, what's that next step? Um, and really putting your name on different projects and just knowing that the work that you do here will be used um, and carried forward um, after, even after you're gone or if we decide to hire you on, which that's a whole another conversation, but we do hire our interns pretty often. And um, we do, I do get requests it's been every at the end of every term for people like hey can we extend their internship or like how can we keep this intern um just because the work again you're doing is something that you are contributing to that team to that department and we value that our interns would help push us push us forward so um highly highly encourage you guys to apply highly encourage you to attend the career expo um, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Daphne. And for those of you who are live, stay with us. And for those of you who are watching the recording, um, I hope you got a lot out of it. And um, that Career Expo sounds fantastic. So I think, I don't know, I'm going to talk to Daphne if I can just go and do a little stroll. So maybe I would see you there. <laughs> so everyone who is live, just hold tight and we will join you in a second. <laughs> 